Well, good morning, everybody. It's great that you've joined with us uh, on this Sunday. Uh, and you may notice that things look a little bit differently uh, this morning. Uh, I've got some good friends, uh, Sonny and Gloria, are joining with us this morning, and they're going to share some thoughts about some of the things that God has placed on their heart. So, uh, without further ado, good morning, guys. Are you are you well? Hello. Is it good morning? Yeah, good yeah. Morning. Good morning. Hi. Yeah. Do you just want to um, start by telling us uh, who you are? Because some people may not know you, especially if they're not part of CBC on a regular basis. Yeah, so my name is uh, Sonny Bonu. Um, my name is Gloria, Gloria Onu. Yeah, so we're both members of the church and been going, attending for a few years now. Uh, been married for four years. In October? Oh, oh yeah, October, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> but um, yeah. Time flies when it's all good. That's the exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, does. having fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I've been, we've been attending church for, for, a, for a good few years now. Um, I was attending, um, I've been attending for six, five, six years, but probably a lot more frequent for the last uh, four years. Okay. And Sonny, you're one of the deacons, is that correct? I am, I am, yes. Um, so I've been a deacon for just uh, for, um, over a year. Is it over a year? Or almost a year. <laughs> almost a year. Sorry, my... my, my, my the time. Uh, my, my, yeah, the time is not very good. <laughs> yeah, so... And Gloria, you so serve good. on, you do, you're part of the welcome team, is that? I, I am, I am part of the um, church welcome team. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Before we, can, you might have to speak up, both of you, a little oh, bit. Really? So, uh, okay. People can, can hear us. Well, okay. uh, how have you guys been doing uh, during lockdown? How's it going? Okay. Okay. Um, for me, I have been going into work. Okay. Right from the start of the lockdown, that was in March. Yeah, in March. So, um, a week into the lockdown, we were my office split us into two. Mm -hmm. My office is usually around the corner from where we live in Kosher, like right. 10, 15 minutes walk to work. But I'm having to drive now to the other side okay. in Haven because of social distancing. So we have to be like, well, space out our work. So I have been going into work every day. So I'm I'm be um, you've been traveling more? I have been, yeah. <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. Every day, back, you know, back on work. Yeah, but it's good because she passed your drive. She passed the driving test literally about was it January? January, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, just in time, um, which yeah. which makes things easier. Indeed. Or else I would have had to go and drop her at work. Um, yeah. So, but um, she's able to drive herself to work, which is good. Is it right, Sunny, that you you got a promotion during lockdown? I don't think I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. You know, God works in mysterious ways. So um, it's uh, you know it's it, it's amazing actually, and the way it happened as well. Um, so it's something myself and Gloria has been praying about. For, you know, it was one of the the sort of um, aspirational things on our prayer list in mm -hmm. January in the new year um, that you know that I get this promotion um, along with other things, and, and but I knew it wasn't a, a sort of a a given or a straightforward thing um you know but so we kept sort of praying about it um regularly and my managers my line manager presented the case for my promotion um and they had sort of uh responded as in um i wouldn't bother reading it you know <laughs> um <laughs> i wouldn't bother reading it you have my support go ahead and give him the and, and my manager had forwarded me the email as well Excellent. and so to see that my um the boss wasn't really bothered about you know he was you know, the, the, you know so i was really 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 pleased and it Fantastic. happened so quickly in that normally these sort of things takes a couple of months to go mm -hmm. through hr you know the interviews and all that stuff but it was it was done within a week and you know it was confirmed mm -hmm. everything Excellent. was sorted out that's, so, that's that's so great even in amongst the struggle, God is still blessing and God is still exactly uh, some, some good stuff. Well, I thought it'd be, be good for us this morning to do things uh, a bit differently, uh, to give people a break from just sharing uh, my, my dulcet tones as well on a Sunday morning. And so I just want us to talk through some of the things uh, to see 
what God might be saying uh, to you guys. Is that is that okay with you? Does that sound sure. okay? Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me kick off by asking you. Uh, there's a guy called uh, John Lennox, and he's written uh, uh, a new small book exploring the question, where is God uh, in a coronavirus world? And so I thought I would, I would ask you, because this goes right smack in there, nothing, no preamble, no, uh, no let's make it gentle, but you know, where do you think God is in all of this? Yeah, good question. <laughs> and it's a valid one. Yeah. It's a valid one. Um, in times like this, um, you know, we as, as Christians, um, as God fearing, we, we, that question does sort of swirl around, um, mm -hmm. especially when we see the pain, we see the distress um, that it's, it's causing. Um, mm -hmm. And so we say, you know, where is the loving God in all this? And, you know, for me, I believe that you know, God is, you know, the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. And he's the one constant thing yeah. through our existence. In each situation, God's interaction with us, you know, is, is adjust to which, whichever environment, whatever situation we find ourselves in. Mm. We, even in this situation we are in you will find that there are many people who have grown closer to god many mm. people who have found the help you know we, we hear stories we watch videos on facebook of people who had never spoken to their neighbors yeah all of a sudden they're speaking to their neighbors the neighbors are a lot more compassionate a lot more willing to spend time to take time out with them mm. and to see how they're doing well, we can vote. We, we've grown closer to our neighbours on either side. Uh, exactly. Actually. Exactly. So, you know, in every situation, God always finds a way to operate. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's always good for us to be open to it mm -hmm. and, and for it to, to manifest in different ways. There is, you know, the, the pain that is out there you know, wherever situation we find ourselves in, it, it's very important for us to know as Christians that um, our, our, our lives aren't sort of, we, we, we were not called into salvation because God promised everything was going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That wasn't, what, that wasn't it. He was saying that despite all the imperfections, you know, he represents something greater, um, a hope, um, mm. that we can't find anywhere else. We struggle um, though, because we like it to be a bit more perfect. Don't yes, we, we do, we yeah. do. Um, and it's, 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 it's very important for us as Christians to, to, to note that, that, you know, God in, 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 in really driving home that message, you know, has given us the perfect example in Christ that he came into a situation and he went through his life and went through difficulties mm. um, and came out the other end. Um, for him, it wasn't going to be a perfect, um, you know, the world he lived in was a brutal world, mm. one that punished him mercilessly. Um, mm. And, but, you know, he, he interacted with people with kindness, showed people respect, you know, and, through his nature and his character, I think there's a lesson for us to learn that mm -hmm. the situations we find ourselves in won't always be perfect. But how we react, um, you know, says a lot about our faith um, than anything else. So what you're saying really is, is, is in no way limited to a coronavirus world, is it? No. The question, where is God in a coronavirus world? That question can be where is God in our financial struggles where is God in our relationship struggles where is God in our yeah. career problems where is God in our health it's, it's every issue isn't it yeah it is it is um because you know his ways are not uh, our, ways, our ways his, thoughts, yeah. are not our his thoughts. thoughts not our thoughts and the way God sees things um you know it, it, it's funny because when when we you know take for, for you know for, for example, um, the, the issue of 
um, the, the series we've just finished, mm. um, the, the whole, you know, the seven, um, sort of um, the freedom um, and the sort of the seven spirits and the, the, yeah. the battles that the children of Israel had to, had to face, um, you know, it, it, it's, it would have been so easy um, for, for, for sort of the, the, the journey for the children of Israel, um, you know, from sort of captivity to um, Canaan wasn't so straightforward. No. Um, we look at, you know, a simple promise. I mean, God made a promise to Abraham, from Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob. And you think by the time it comes to Jacob, we would have, he would have realized, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the, the promise would have come, but no, he took, took a complete detour um, to, to Egypt where, you know, the descendants of Abraham's were in, in abject, you know, in, 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 in servitude for 400 years, yeah. you know, and, it, it, but God knows exactly what he was doing, you yeah. know, for us. We want things straightforward, you know, from A to B, and yeah. that's it. But God was trying to raise a nation, yeah. and um, He did it in, in His own way and in His own time. I think um, you said, Gloria, His ways are not higher than ours, His thoughts are not our yeah. thoughts. No, and He still goes no matter what happens. Yeah. And He will right. definitely give us a beauty from ashes. So, whatever it is that we're going through, He's still going to prove Himself. That's yeah. my belief. In this situation, yeah. God is definitely going to be God. There's no contest in that fact, no yeah. matter what happens now. No, that's good. So, yeah. sort of bringing that closer to home. So, how do you guys uh, navigate life when things aren't what you want it to be? How do you? What What are the some of the things you do to stay rooted to God? Um. I think, you know, for, for, for me... Um, the questions I emailed you. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's fine. Um, you know, I, I think the, one of the most important things is really um, learning over time to, to see God um, not just through his text and through the words in the Bible, but trying to understand his nature. Mm. Um, for me, the, the reason that's important is because the way God, there's a pattern to his behavior. Yeah. And once you understand, once, you know, that came, became a revelation to me, I realized that it, you, 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 you unbelieve at your own um, sort of uh, peril, really, mm. you know, that believe God has his way of doing things. And, you know, regardless of, whatever was going on, um, you know, one of the, the, um, the, the, the passages that, that keeps coming back to me over time has been in Romans um, chapter 8, verse 28, um, which reads um, that, um, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, yeah. um, who have been called according to his purpose. Mm. And that scripture you know, for me, it's like saying God knows best. Yeah. And so for, for us on a day-to-day -day basis, we, we still pray, we, we, we read, read, read our Bibles, um, we, we commit everything to God, you know, uh, you know he, and say, look, we may not understand it. Mm. Um, we may not have truly grasped, you know, even the seriousness of this, because some of these things are abstract. We just see we see statistics. We you know we we see news reports, um, but there are people out in the front line who are seeing the rawness of this. We yeah. we don't see that at this point, um, and so we need to understand that you know for for, for me it's, I'm saying you know God is in charge. God knows best, and we we sort of pray about that on a daily basis that God will uh, protect us um, and you know give us a purpose through all this. Um, you know, it, it's difficult trying to get used to the way things have been done now. Um, you know, we're used to getting up and going. We, we've been so used to this routine. And all of a sudden, we have to stop. Yeah. There was no warning. It's just stop. 
you know, it's that old saying, the steel, I know that I am God, just stop. Yeah. Um, take we'll a moment. Back to that, if you don't mind, in, in a moment. Sure. Actually. But I think what you're talking about, because you, you mentioned uh, in one of our leaders' meetings a few months ago, you talked about, uh, I think the phrase, I wrote it down, the phrase you said was, how we see God determines what we believe he can do. Yeah. And, and is that sort of a, um, a, a way in which you live your lives? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I, 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 I said in, in, in that meeting that, um, that, that basically, you know, the reason I feel that way and we feel that way is because one of the things that we were taught as, uh, as a new Christian was that um, it was really, really important that we saw God the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, because when, when you're a child and your parents says to you, you know, how big is your God? You know, the first thing you would do is like raise your hands and say, you know, my God is this big. Yeah. Um, and you mean it with all your heart. Um, mm -hmm. And then as you grow older and someone else asks you that question in different ways, that's, you know, that enthusiasm isn't as wide. Um, as big as it, it, it used to um, and but you know the, the reason is so important for us for me anyway is, is one of one of the one of the ways that I've looked I've, I've seen things is through um, the way the way God sort of operates and a classic example would be what he did in Genesis where you know God basically uh, you know built created the world and created the Garden of Eden, and then he created Adam and Eve. So God had created absolutely everything Adam and Eve would, would need yeah. before they were created. And so they needed nothing in, God, in, sort of in the relationship with God. They had everything that they needed. It was yeah. complete. Yeah. You know, and, and so, and, and that's, for me, that's the sort of, in, in the way we, we see God, that, you know, the, we truly believe that if God has said it, then he'll do it hmm. um, because that's that's the way he sort of is, is operate and the whole idea of you know how you see god um sort of you know determines how, sort of impacts on how um, um how you see god sort of impacts on um how um uh, sort of even on things how you how what you think he, he can do you hmm. can see uh, there's a classic example in 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 sort of uh, in numbers I think it's Numbers 13 and 14. The children of Israel, um, when they came out of Egypt um, and, you know, God has taken them to the land of Canaan, as he promised, and say, you know, here you go, here's the land of Canaan. And Moses had sent in the spies to live amongst the Canaanites for uh, 40 days. Um, and they came back with reports and the reports were, were you know, look, they have everything God promised. The land is truly is flowing with milk and honey. Look at the fruits. However, 10 of the spies said that, um, 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 that basically they, they saw there the, the, the sons of Anak, giants and people who, you know, there was no way Israel could fight them. Yeah. And the other two, Caleb, um, Joshua and Caleb, saw things differently. They said, yes, we have seen, I mean, they saw exactly the same uh, giants that the, the other spies saw. They saw all the, ev all the reasons why they shouldn't go in, but yet they believed because why? Because God had promised them that land. And also they that's believed. because they, that they understood God's nature and how yes, God Yes, absolutely. And yes, that, that's it. And is it. Exactly. And they totally understood that, but you know, the, the other the others refused, and that cost Israel forty years in the wilderness because they refused, and they were too afraid, and God was angry, and so they spent forty years wandering in the wilderness, um, and you know, and, and that's an, an, an example really of, of of why it's important for for us to see God in in, in the right way and sort of understand that in his nature there are things he you know he, he's he, in his nature he is sort of it is in his nature to give and to protect and to provide for us you know that whole thing about Jehovah Jireh that's you know our provider that's who he is and that's you know he'll be there for us and, and that's he's, he's, that's spiritual as well as physical isn't it 
Because I suppose mm. thinking of your situation, to really want to try and bring this, uh, sim you know, to make it as simple as we can, you know, because you could look at it and think, hey, it's easy to see God uh, providing, you know, when the sun is shining and all is well yeah. with the world. And we haven't got a care in the world. Yeah. But, uh, and to see that God has gone before us and provided for our lives. Mm. And uh, whether that be, I don't mean uh, just giving us things for the sake of giving us things. I don't mean prosperity. Yeah. But I mean, sure. you know, providing a way for us to live and, and yeah. our natures and, and all of our character and all of that kind of stuff. But it's when we're in a world that we're in at the moment or when uh, outside the lockdown, because <laughs> let's be honest, you know, outside the lockdown, we're still going to have problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. still going to be worries. Would you say yeah. that the, the way in which... Laura, you were able to pass your driving test. And it sounds quite silly, but for you now in lockdown, that's been key, hasn't it? That's been really important that you were able to, to do that. It is, because um, I'd failed, I'd, I'd previously failed my test, and then after 10 days, I'd passed this past it. Yeah. I didn't want to, if you, you were away in Scotland, I was just by myself when I'd failed the test. And I was going to book it in. And usually booking a test will take you at least six weeks. Mm. So I kept checking till about 2 a.m. in the morning. And yeah. I found it did. I was 10 days apart. And can book your test after 10 days, not before 10, 10 days of past L yeah. test. So I got, I got the day. It was the 29th of January. I was like, great. Thank God. I was going to uh, go for yeah. it just after 10 days of failing the previous test. And I went and I passed it. And then this all happened. And I was like, it's got to be God, because if not, if I hadn't got between 9th of January, it'd probably be the ending of February or March or yeah. never <laughs> for now, because no one is sure when it's going to be like, have that test. Yes. So I was, I was like, it has to be God working, because I pray that I, I don't want to wait for another six weeks for another test. You know, I didn't even tell anyone else <laughs> I booked, booked the test. So it all happened, I got the test after 10 days and I passed it and then it, all this happened and I happened to be walking far, further away from home and having to drive, I was like, this has just got to be God working. And then to top it all off, the company pays for fuel. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And like, this is God, <laughs> they've been paying for fuel for March. Yeah. So, so I'm pro, they pay for our fuel, you know, Everyone, yeah. you know, all the travel, we claim the bag, which was like, yeah, so. I've not had to spend a penny. Well, you know, let's not talk about the way I'm telling the car, but I'm not complaining. So it's, I was going to say, it's, it's really good. And it tells me about a chapter that's very close to my heart, Ecclesiastes chapter four. There's a time for everything. So yeah. I, I just believe God's timing, it's always the best. I know a few months, maybe efficient and all that. But I just say God, God knows, he, he just knows what he's doing. His ways are definitely not our ways. Mm -hmm. His thoughts are definitely not our thoughts. And it's just taught us a lot that we have to see God in, in the process, in everything that's happened. And then we are, we're going to have to sh like save it, save the bad from the good and try to see, okay, this is God. This is God working. You know, it may not look very palatable, but God is always behind the scenes. He's always been behind the scenes. And I think for me, what I'm hearing from you, it, to me, it's Father, isn't it? it it's Father God, knowing, yeah. uh, wanting the best for his kids, by the three of us and everybody else that's, that's watching this morning. And it, it's yeah. God going before us. It's God being for us. It's God surrounding us. It's God. It's not God um, waving that, you know, uh, metaphorical magic one god doesn't work like that but it's realizing if we stay close to god then it's not that we'll right. get all that we need but we or oh, sorry it's not that we'll get all that we want but god will mm. provide for for what we need in all aspects of life not just material things but yeah uh, you know, just just how we live our emotions and our spiritual life and everything yeah yeah um you, you said earlier, Sonny, about when we uh, come out of the lockdown, you know, thinking of when we can't go back, we might have to do some things 
a bit differently, you know. Uh, do, you say, do you think there's a sense that God is ask, asking us to do things differently? What, what do you think he's saying in that? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting point. Um, I, I think, you know, what, you know, I think this lockdown has basically shown us that regardless of what we are doing right now, we can always do things differently. Mm. Um, and, you know, we, we, we've now found ourselves in a situation whereby everyone's thinking outside the box. Mm. Um, um, but I think, you know, even personally in our, in our personal lives, you know, we, we've spent, I think, more time, again, because there's been less, for me, there's, it's less travel, less stress. Um, we've sort of spent more quality time together, talking, um, even reading a book, um, and you know which which is which is good, and it's something that we in the past we've struggled to to find that balance. Um, and I think perhaps it, it it's really something that we would like to carry on, regardless of you know and find that time and create that time. I think what it's done for me as well. I think it's the reason I think lots of people have turned to the church is because within all of us there's a there's a spiritual aspect to life. And when, yeah. when the rubber hits the road, people, that's when people want, there's just something innate within us as human beings, I think, that wants yeah. to turn to God and wants to find uh, that solace. And, you know, you mentioned about being able to read a book together. I'm sure Gloria Sonny's been able to do much more of the, the housework and all of that kind of, and the cooking <laughs> and cleaning and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, don't, don't, don't give her ideas, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I'll email you, Dory. I'll send you a list. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a, you mentioned time, you know, and I think what, I think what God is, is saying to us, you know, there's a reason that, that God created Sabbath, isn't it? That yeah. God created that time of, of rest. And I think it, it's saying to us, you know, we've had to, it's been enforced upon us but actually take the benefit of that, you know, when you come out of this lockdown and actually don't go at things at 120 miles an hour, you know. Yeah. The reason you can only do things 100%, there's only a there's only 100%, you know, you can't do 105%, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't exist. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um, yeah. Gloria, what have you missed during this lockdown season? Anything you've missed? Yes, I have missed and I'm really desperate for a hug from church members, my very good church member friends. I've really missed that. Yeah. 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 I've missed that. I've missed um, the fellowship. Yes. Yeah. I've missed the fellowship. Although um, for the prayer triplets, having to do it via Zoom, but it was so like very nice to have, you know, to sit around and you know, chat yeah. to one another. So I've missed that. Yeah, so what you want then, when we all come back together, you, you're just going to get inundated with hugs. That's what you're going to get. I inundated. am. That's oh, God. I'm going to give everyone a big hug. <laughs> if I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and Sally, is there anything that you think when you come out of lockdown that you will uh, you'll let go of? Let go? Um, oh, don't worry, we don't hold <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, let go or, or perhaps continue um, for me, which would be, you know, reading more um, yeah. and, you know, perhaps even reading more together with, with my wife, spending more quality, quality time together. Um, because, you know, as I said in the, in the past, it, it's been quite tricky coming back from work and, you know, after two, two hours, two and a half hours in traffic, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to do anything else um, <laughs> other than, you know, and sometimes I can't even sort of uh, go to the gym because I'm that tired. So it's, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's all good. I suppose it's letting but, go yeah. of allowing that other stuff to crowd out what mm. God has given us as important in life, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. I think letting go of eating junk because we're kind of eating anything. Oh, know, yeah. Junk, junk food. <laughs> We've just been eating, like, yeah. Gloria, really? I won't give away. I won't tell Sonny secretly. We all know he loves Harry Bow sweets. I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but 
that, that was that, that 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 was the old me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it has been so lovely uh, to chat to you today. Can I just pray for you both before? Yes, before you... please. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for Sunny and Gloria. Uh, a real privilege and a blessing to spend some time with them today, and also to just hear their heart and to hear. Uh, the deep things that you've been saying to them, the deep things that you're calling them to, the blessings that you've placed upon their lives. Uh, and Father, I just ask that you will be with them uh, every single day, whatever the situations that they're facing right now, that they will really send your hand upon them. Thank you for them. Uh, may they know that they're loved and valued uh, by you and their church family. Yeah, look after them and keep them safe, we pray. Uh, and for your son, Jesus, we ask. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Uh, we will see you again, hopefully, in the not too distant future. Awesome. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, that was great, wasn't it? Uh, I just want to very briefly uh, just tie in what I felt Sonny uh, was saying to me. And I want to read from uh, Hebrews 10, verse 23. We read, So now we must cling tightly to the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. And I don't know what films you enjoy, but I quite like a, a, an action film, an action thriller. And often you get the, the main character is at, at some point in that film, they're hanging you know, by a ledge on a window or a, a, a huge cliff or whatever it is. And, and you think that's it, they're, they're doomed for, they're, they're done for. And then very often they summon some super in a physical strength and they pull themselves up to safety or, or something like that anyway but as i read this verse from hebrews it says to me there are times in life when the sunny and gloria were saying the, the coronavirus season that we're in at the moment or whatever it is you may be facing we simply have to cling tightly uh, to the hope that lives within us and and this hope uh, is jesus you know when you're in that situation where there's it's just no easy fix. There's, no, there's not a straightforward answer to life's struggles. It's often in the digging in, in the clinging on, in the holding tightly for dear life. That is where we see Jesus. That is where we experience this hope that is steadfast and is certain. Because we know we do so with a God who keeps his promises and he's right there with us. He hasn't he hasn't gone anywhere. He'll, he'll get us through because that's what he tells us. Is where Sonny and Gloria were saying, no, God uh, is faithful. God will always bring us, he brings us through things. They read Romans 8, 28, God works for the good of, of those who love him or called according uh, to his purpose. And I suppose what they're saying is that, you know, God, uh, when we go through these difficult times that we're going through at the moment, God will he, he just puts things in place. He shows his, his nature doesn't change. Our circumstances may change us because we may have more struggle. But God's nature doesn't change and he is perfect and he will always uh, be, be there with us. You know, I loved what Sonny shared about the order of creation. God, you know, provided everything that Adam and Eve needed and then he created them. And as we think about our own lives, whatever it is that you're, going through at the moment i just want to encourage you to see that that god knows that you know he's a god that will have created things to enable you uh, to live your life uh, as he has called you to and you know it, it, it may be there are times when it's hard to see that that god has provided as that verse from hebrew said so we must cling tightly to the hope that lives within us knowing that god always uh, keeps his promises friends uh, sometimes faith is just about digging in and hanging on in there, even though life is far from what we would like it to be. And as Sunny was and Gloria were talking to us about, you know, where God is in this coronavirus and some of the things that they're missing, you know, Gloria's missing a hug. Uh, I think Sunny's missing Harry Bow Sweets, you know. Uh, what do you think God is saying to us? He's just saying that God is still there, that God hasn't gone anywhere, that God is with us, that God is guiding us, and, and he's going to bring us through this difficult time. And we can say all of that 
because God loves us so more, so much more than we could ever, ever imagine, because he is Father. And so as we close today, I just want to agree with what Sonny and Gloria shared with us and add that it's not always about what we see or what we feel. It's about what we know to be true. And because of what God says in his word, the Bible, but also because what you and I will have experienced in our own lives of God in the past. Because of that, we can know that God is still who he says he is. He's still on the throne. And so we are to cling to the hope. We're to cling on to Jesus because God is faithful to us. And he is still God. Let's just pray together. Father, yeah, we just want to thank you for this morning. And uh, just a reminder through some lovely people sharing their heart, sharing you. We just want to thank you that in the clinging on, you are there, that in the hanging on, in the digging in, in the planting our feet and standing uh, steadfast and standing strong, we do that because of you and that you are right there with us. And so, Father, whoever's watching this, whatever we're going through, whether we're just in struggles because of the coronavirus or whether... There are other struggles going in on in life, behind the scenes. I just pray that by your spirit, right now, that we will be able to be still and know that you are God and know that you are there. Thank you, Father. Bless you. Amen. Thanks for listening. It's been great that you could join with us today. Bye-bye.